Communication is key when it comes to properly running and managing a modern media ministry. Whether it be getting the right camera shot, adjusting mic gain and balance, placing the appropriate scripture and lyrics on the projectors, or just responding to live streaming comments, there are tons of moving parts. Shouting, text messages, and hand signals can only get you but so far. Just like any team that handles intricate operations and functions, they rely on a solid communication system that makes sending messages back and forth an afterthought. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Bose Soundcom B40 headset, which has been made specifically for houses of worship and other live production staff. What do these headsets do differently than all the rest, and are they worth your investment? Let's find out. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. Link is in the description, or you can become a YouTube member by clicking the join button below. Now, before I start in full transparency, Bose sent me these headsets free of charge and wanted a church media ministry perspective. I must say that these headsets are not a bargain bin at all. They offer so many features that I've only dreamed about having in headsets to properly communicate to my media team in a busy and hectic environment like a typical church service. Now, one of these great features is active noise reduction. I can't tell you how many times our media ministry has missed a cue because we couldn't hear each other and we definitely don't want to speak too loud. We've had ushers sent to the media booth to inform us that people in the congregation can hear our conversation, which is not good at all. The noise reduction and dynamic mic allows us to talk at whisper levels and clearly hear each other. Now, there are two configurations in these headsets. You have a mono ear and a dual ear. You also have two choices of connection types, a four pin XLR female or a five pin XLR male connection. Since these are only headsets, you obviously need an intercom system. And these connections that work on these headsets are work with pretty much major intercom systems. Now, my church uses the Mars T1000, which has a 3.5 millimeter connection. So we had to purchase adapters to convert those XLR female connections to the 3.5 millimeter so that ours will work. Now, let's go ahead and open these things up and let's see what comes inside the box, shall we? Alrighty, this is the mono ear and pretty much they all are exactly the same. It's just one of them has one ear, the other one has two. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see what we got here. We got a little card here that we'd like to hear from you. Send your feedback and questions here which is nice. And you also have a little manual to walk you through everything, the settings, the bag, what comes with it, all this other fun stuff. Um, you know, assembly, disassembly, all this other stuff. So kind of straightforward. Another little booklet here, the, I guess the quick start guide on how you would hook everything up. And we're going to be showing you some of this stuff as well. And it comes with this nice little bag. Oh, so let's get this out of here and we'll set this over here too. We don't need those right now. All right. Very nice. Very nice. So let's see. All righty. Nice bag to actually protect these. You will want to protect these and wouldn't just want these to be thrown around. So like I said, this is the mono ear configuration. We've got our dynamic mic. You can disassemble this part here. We're not gonna do that. All right, and we also have some clips here that you can mount this as a placeholder or you have a belt clip here with some very industrial strength <laughs> Velcro. I, I clipped this onto one of these and it took quite a while and some significant effort to disconnect that. All right, let's pull this through here. 
and see the bulk of this whole headset. All right, little zip tie here. All right, so what do we got in here? We got something I've never seen before. That, that is sarcasm, sarcasm. There's some AA batteries here. And this is for the what drives the um, active noise reduction system. Uh, yeah. Get this stuff out of here. And this is the main component that's going to be used that handles all of the noise reduction. And this is where your industrial strength <laughs> Velcro is. And like I said, let me show you just how strong this stuff is. So normally, I don't know what placeholder you would have this on if this was like a, a stand or something like that, but um, all right. So I mean, this, yeah, it's strong. It ain't going nowhere if you use one of these. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up here. And placement for the batteries orientation is right there. So let's go ahead and drop these in here. All right, all good. Now here's your on and off switch for the active noise reduction right there. And let's undo this just a little bit so I don't have these cables all over the place. So you got plenty of cable here if you need to run a longer distance or something like that or have this hooked on your hip. That's what I actually use mine for when I use this because like I said most of the time I'm playing um, on second and fourth Sundays so I would have one of these that helps me cancel out when I'm playing and I would want the single ear just so I can still hear all the music that's going on, hear myself singing, but at the same time, this side of my face is actually gonna get um, canceled out so I can hear whoever's talking. You got a little rotation movement right there. Really nice, comfortable, and if you don't know what ear it is, there's a big L right there. That means not your left, obviously, it means your left. <laughs> All right, so in here is we have the four pin um, XLR female connection, and that is what the adapters we are using for ours. And I will have a link to the adapters of where I purchased ours. But like I said, our Mars T1000 system uses a 3.5 millimeter connection so these are the adapter that I got that works with ours. So really straightforward, make sure we get the four pins, the right number and everything like that. And cool, and it works for our setup. And really all you got is once you get the batteries on, all you gotta do is flip that switch, boom, we get the engage and then it just drives off of that. Now I must say, these are very comfortable. And even without this being plugged into anything, you can actually hear the difference in this ear from just this being on. So with this off, I can hear the sound of my computer, the trains and the noise and the cars driving by from here. But with this engaged, you can still hear, but it deadens the sound. So it's almost kind of like the sound is far away. And I actually have um, a couple of people um, who tested this out at church that I'm gonna cut over to other video with this. So um, really nice, very comfortable. Um, I, I know with other ones that I've had before, again, I play, I sweat. It was very uncomfortable after a certain period of time that I actually take the headsets off so that I can actually do my piano thing. Um, but this is something that um, when used it last Sunday, it was very comfortable, really liked it, didn't have any problems, and I was able to clearly hear 
when everybody was talking to me from the media booth all the way downstairs. And it didn't cause any significant feedback because again, I'm around a drummer, a bass player, choir members, um, and I am on the piano. We have amps, all that sound is being done. This was able to cancel it out very well and re actually cancel it and heavily reduce it so that I can actually hear very well. Now, the problem with this, there's no way for me to set this up in a way so you can actually hear. I actually attempted to put a microphone in between the two headsets so that maybe you can notice the sound difference, but it was just kind of hard to isolate that and I don't have a isolation system or something in place so that you can test it out. So you just have to trust me for my word as well as some other people that I will bring in the video to go over that. So let's go ahead and cut over to church service where we are actually using this. All right, now with these Bose headphones, because we are using the Hollyland Mars T1000 that has a 3.5 millimeter connection, these come with a female four pin adapter. Looks similar, kind of like XLR. So we had to get an adapter for this to work. I will have a link in the description for what we used and it just converts this down. So this is the dual ear, this is the single ear and Depending on who's going to be here, we will have this all set up for somebody else to test out. All right, so the main noise cancellation feature runs off of two AA batteries. And let's go ahead and get this all hooked up on my hip. And I put it up like this, so it is easy to flip the switch here. And let's get it all connected and get our system turned on. So I'm actually going to bring this and test this out with somebody and let them firsthand see what's going on. So let me put some appropriate music on so I don't get hit for and then we're going to test this out. So I'm playing this right now and I have Deacon Ote here and I'm going to have him test out what this sounds like. So we're going to be just listening and have him let me know what he hears. So we're paying Pomp and Circumstance right now so you can hear that. So you can hear the sound through it right now. Now, I'm going to flip on the noise cancellation and let me know what you hear. Yeah, I'm hearing that. But how did, how did the sound go? <laughs> was it as loud as it was before? Go back for a minute. All right, go back. No, it's like it's in the background. Yeah. Way in the background. <laughs> now, so you got to think. Whoever, now let me turn this off so you can hear me fine. Now, you yeah. got to think. The idea is for somebody in the media booth to have that on, and just imagine turning that noise cancellation on, and now all they're hearing is if you're in the media booth up there, and so you can just concentrate, and it's just drowning out yeah. all the noise. So, like, if I had the other headset to talk, uh -huh. it would drown out every... You could still hear it, but it's faint enough, but you would clearly hear whoever's talking. Yeah. Now, so. with that, when you switch to the noise counseling, I just could hear that. Mm -hmm. I could hear it. But that was, like... Secondary. Yeah, it won't. I don't believe it's. It's not the word. It will completely erase right. everything. Right. But it's it's dull enough to where you can still hear whoever's communicating exactly. perfectly fine. Yeah. Great. Cool. You knew the music was there, but I could hear everything else that was going on. Okay. Yeah. Now, one thing I have to address with this, especially if y'all know what I do on this channel, is to talk about how you can actually do a lot of things and it doesn't have to break the bank. Now, I'm gonna make a small exception with this. Um, a lot of times when I offer and talk about um, trying to do low cost items and stuff like that, it's because a lot of us are just starting and most of us don't have a budget. Now, I must admit, as time goes on, the intention is that you understand that you can move to bigger and better things that can offer more um, features and everything like that. So with that being said, these headsets are around $850 each. And I know a lot of y'all like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. I thought the same thing too. But the more and more you get into this stuff and you start getting more serious with it, yes, can you use just a bunch of walkie talkies? Yeah, you probably could. 
but it's about an investment in quality stuff. Now, again, you could go buy something cheap and then when it breaks, you keep replacing it over and over and over again if you want to. And sooner or later, you're going to end up spending the same amount if you just invest it in high quality stuff. For example, uh, tons of people are live streaming with a webcam. There's nothing the matter with that. But as time goes on, you start to see the limits and the restrictions of what those devices have. And ultimately, most of the time, you end up moving to something bigger and better to actually get you what you need. And it's not always about cutting back and cutting corners here and there. It's about getting what you need that can deliver from day one all the functionality that you need. So again, I say that to say, yes, these were expensive but it offers us and changes the dynamic of everything that we had. Because even with our intercom, we had to make sure that we weren't yelling, um, we were able to communicate, and then when it actually starts getting loud, when we actually have more people back in church, can we still hear or will we still be able to whisper? I'm actually very happy with these after, and again, to be quite honest, this since this is our first <laughs> endeavor or our first journey or actually our first time ever using an intercom system i didn't even know what options were out there available so i just went with whatever was there and then thankfully we got um another intercom system which is great communicates great and everything like that but then when i got <laughs> and put this on my ears and other people in the media ministry put this on their ears it was like wow this is a night and day difference and i must say i'm really excited about the changes that this will bring with our media ministry and like i said i like to be transparent with y'all and tell y'all exactly my thoughts about it and like i said no one is reviewing this to make sure I say certain things before this goes out. I'm giving you my honest opinion of using this in a media ministry where sometimes, actually not sometimes, majority of the time, we are kind of budget constrained and we're trying to be good stewards over the money that we spend. And I must say at a certain point, sometimes it's good to buy quality instead of always counting the cost. And that's what I would say with these Bose B40s. So again, thank you so much for Bose for sending these out um, for me to review. And I must say, I have to say, I am really happy with what they do, how they performed, how they sounded. And even though this is a lot higher than what I would have thought to actually purchase after using them, I believe it's a sound investment and I would highly recommend if this is in your budget range to get it and to not skimp when it comes to communication. Links are in the description for if you are interested in one of these devices. And like I said, if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments. I read all the comments and I will try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can if you have any questions in any way, shape or form. So again, thank you Bose for sending these out. I'm really enjoying them. <laughs> So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. And I want to thank the patrons and our members on YouTube for making this video possible. Their names are on the screen right now. And you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month or a YouTube member for as little as $4.99 a month. Either one that you do will help us train media ministries all over the world. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ. We will see you on the next video. Later.